When you're working in NLP, it's quite normal that you review new data that's coming in. The idea is that you might learn something from this new data, and new data needs to be labeled. And we can imagine a scenario where we've got a user who just told us, yo. And this word yo should map to a intent. Let's say that this intent was to greet someone. And in this case, it might be that the word yo never appeared in our training data. Yo might not be the most formal way of saying hello, but we still want our assistant to be able to detect the right intent here. So this would be the start of a conversation that we definitely want a human to look at, because that way we can attach the appropriate label, we can then retrain our algorithm, and hopefully in the future we'll be able to correctly identify yo as a greeting. This is much easier said than done though. If we assume that the assistant is in production, then we will have a lot of logs. And these logs will have many different conversations. And what's going to be hard is that examples like this, where we can learn a lot from, they might be hidden in all of the conversations that we have in our logs. We would like to have a system that's able to say, well, this conversation went fine, this conversation also went fine, but maybe in this conversation something strange happened. And we might be able to make a little recommender that's able to say things like, hey, label this one first. What we'd like to have here is a system that is able to spot unexpected behavior in a conversation that causes the conversation to break. We're kind of looking for conversations that had an unhappy path. It's these conversations that deserve priority because they may give us a hint on how to improve the system. The focus though won't just be on intent examples like what you see over here. Instead, the main focus is going to be, can we have a system that will tell us if there are unhappy paths and if there are stories that we need to consider? In this video, we're going to be discussing a system that does exactly this. The goal of the system is to find conversations that deserve a review in the hope that the most insightful conversations receive priority in the reviewing queue. Before diving into the algorithm though, let's consider how a conversation might go wrong. Let's take this as an example conversation. It's between a user and a virtual assistant that can order a pizza for you. Let's consider the moving parts. On the user side, whenever the user utters something, we've got an intent that we are predicting. On the other side, whenever the user said something, we usually perform an action. So we could argue that there's an action prediction happening here as well. So far, this conversation follows a fairly happy path. User says hello, then the user says they want to buy a pizza. The assistant asks what kind, the user says veggie, and then we ask, do you want anything else? Let's now change the conversation slightly, such that it's no longer following a happy path. Maybe the user says something along the lines of, can I pay with a Visa card? Technically speaking, you could argue this is a bit of an interruption. The user is deviating from a predefined happy path, but it's not an unreasonable thing to happen. After you've made clear that you want to buy a pizza, you might wonder if you can even pay for the pizza with the car that you currently have. So let's say that this is happening. How might we be able to detect that the conversation took a wrong turn? We could have a look at this action prediction over here. You can imagine that after seeing a response like this one, that maybe the confidence level of this prediction is less. And sure, this is true, but is the confidence on the action end of the spectrum really the best proxy? You might certainly imagine that there needs to be some effect on the confidence here, but it's not a root cause. The root cause is that the user said something unexpected, not that our assistant is trying to make sense of it. So if we're gonna be trying to find unexpected behavior, and particularly unexpected behavior that we can learn from, then we need to have a look at these intents. We need to find a way to understand when the user is saying something that we didn't expect. And that means that in the intent end of the spectrum, there's probably a more robust proxy for us. If we're going to be looking for unexpected behavior, it's going to be behavior from the user, not from our assistant that we're interested in. It's the user that we're trying to understand better after all. And that means that we should explore these intents as our main proxy and not the actions over here. It's important to make a clear note of this though, 
since this is a big difference between what we're usually doing with our user stories. Usually what we're doing is we're using stories to predict the next action. But that's not what we're going to be interested in here. Here, we're going to try to predict these intents. And if we can spot a difference between what we expect and what we see, then that might be a really good proxy to say, hey, this has to be labeled first. So what might a system look like that can spot unexpected intents? On a high level, the system will consider works as follows. We will have a conversation so far. This will be the sequence of actions and intents. And that is something that we can pass into a model. And out of this model will come a representation, a embedding, you could say. At the same time, though, we will also have the observed intent. That is the intent that we observe at the current time step. And this intent, well, that can also be transformed into a representation. You can get this representation by adding a embedding layer. But the main observation at this point in time is that we now have two representations and we could calculate the similarity between them. And this similarity, well, we can pass that through a threshold of sorts. The idea with this threshold is that something that we might be able to tweak, we might be able to configure it to be more or less picky. But what is going to be coming out over here is a yes or no label for being a candidate. Because here we might be able to say that something unexpected happened. And therefore, we could see this as a flag that when it gets predicted, there's something happening in the story that we need to look at. So, so far, so good. But let's now talk a little bit about the model that we're actually using for this, because this system might sound a bit familiar. Now, the part that I've highlighted over here, that can be implemented using TED, which is Raza's algorithm to predict the next action in a story. The main thing that we've changed is that instead of putting an action in here and then calculating the similarity that comes out over here, we are using intents. And that means that the model that we're using here is the transformer architecture. That also means that to get this representation, we are merely passing this intent through an embedding layer. But the main thing that's great is that we can reuse code that we already have in our code base. We already have a transformer model that works very well on a sequence of intent action pairs. So it's great to be able to reuse that. We should talk a little bit about the labels that we're using to train the system though. Let's say that I'm interested in training this system over here. And let's also assume that I have these two stories at my disposal. Now these stories on their own, they're quite basic. This story over here checks what's your mood. And if you're doing great, it tells you that's terrific. While the other one tries to cheer you up if you're saying that you've gotten a bad mood. From these stories though, we might be able to generate some labels. And here's a table with labels that we might be able to generate. If we are in the beginning of the story over here, then the only intent that we can actually see is this greet intent. And you'll notice that the same thing holds over here. So that means that I could say that if the story so far is empty, then the intent greet can appear with a positive label. It's indeed something we've seen in the story before, which is why we are assigning this positive label. Let's now consider the point in time over here. In this situation, we have seen the intent greet. We have asked, hey, how are you? And in this case, we are able to see the good mood intent. And in the other story, we see pretty much the same thing, but we also observe the mood bad intent. And that explains the rows that we see over here. Again, we've got positive labels because these are events that actually happened in the story. But from this conversational input, you can argue that indeed two intents are possible. So that's a selection of positive labels. Let's now consider these negative ones. Effectively, these negative labels over here, they represent situations that just never happened in a story. For example, when a story just got started, 
we have never seen a user declare their mood before. So those are two examples that we can assign the negative label to. And similarly, after greeting and getting the utter how are you action, we haven't seen someone greet again. So that would also be a negative label outcome. Note that in this basic example, I've only shown a few negative labels here. And we're also really just using very basic stories. In practice, this will be different. In practice, our stories will be much longer. We'll have way more stories. And we will also typically sample more negative examples than positive ones. But this is the gist of generating labels. Now, what's nice about this is that we do this in an unsupervised way. Given that we have stories, we can generate these labels on your behalf, and you don't have to actually assign these labels yourself. So as an example, the story so far could be greet and utter how are you. The intent that we are considering could be this mood good. And in this case, we can say, well, the similarity that we should see here is quite high. So that means that the positive label can translate to a plus one over here. Conversely, if we had a different intent over here, let's say the greet intent, that had a negative label, and that should result in a similarity of zero. The idea here is that this system will learn a pattern because after all, it is a neural network that will listen to the gradient signal. Any error that we make here will propagate and it will cause all the parts of our architecture here to update. The idea is that we're gonna repeat this for all of our stories and all of our labels and by doing this, we will end up with a system that is able to detect when an uttered intent is unexpected. And this is great when you're interested in finding moments that broke a conversation. But there's also something else that we might be able to do with this model. As mentioned earlier, we are going to put a threshold after this model, which will allow us to be more or less specific. But we can also wonder what the flag that comes out might be useful for. After all, we could use this model as a policy mechanism and it can output a trigger, something along the lines of action, unlikely intent. After all, it's a signal that something unexpected is happening in the conversation. So this might also be useful, not just for the phase where we're labeling new data that's coming in, but it might also be useful when we keep fallback scenarios in mind. We are after all witnessing a situation where something unusual is about to happen. And it will be nice if we can fail gracefully in these scenarios. The main use case for this policy, however, is to detect that something unexpected happened, which will be very good in the labeling phase of designing an assistant. And also because this policy is based on the TED algorithm, we've decided to call this policy the unexpected intent policy. The main use case for this policy is to use this action unlikely intent trigger during labeling inside of Raza X. You can use it to find stories that deserve attention. And in an upcoming video, I'll give a demo on how this works.